Hello boys, my name is Kleyoshi, and if you're wondering why I'm not playing Hyrule Warriors, well, this is why. I am actually decided to get a new game altogether and do a new playthrough. You guys probably remember that I haven't really played any Kirby games on this channel, so this is going to be the first one I actually do, at least on a Switch, and in general on my channel. This is a new game called Kirby in the Forgotten Land, and... I did some research, well not really much, I did find out it's 100% category, so this is going to be a hundred, yeah, another 100% blind playthrough, which once again means I'm going into it for the first time and I have no clue what to do. And yes, I'll click that online because I want the uh, fill features to be ready, at least as far as I'm aware. I didn't quite remember actually, let's check. Uh, I think I have... Actually, actually I, I checked my thing on somewhere else, and I do believe I already, uh, uh, connect. And there will be two different modes. Uh, Spring Breeze mode is probably the easy mode that people probably don't want me to do, so we'll just go with this. I get, want the game to be as interesting as possible. So... We're in what appears to be a 3D version of the Kirby world. As, in terms of main games, other than Kirby Star Allies, the main platforming series hasn't really seen a new game in some time. Similar to Mario, Kirby's more known for his platform style of gameplay. But in the meanwhile, we have this big storm that apparently hits Dreamland. At least that's what, according to manuals, that's what this world is apparently called, Dreamland. I will say one thing that does make this a bit different is Kirby's absolutely cute to look at. But anyways, this storm is kind of bad, as pulling in almost everyone. Alright, so it looks like we've been sent into the alternate dimension. Who knows where we'll end up. He's also changing into some really weird saves. <sighs> alright, alright. How what exactly is, uh, has happened, we don't know. All I know is we're probably not in J-Mad anymore. We're completely somewhere else. And yes, I did do a little bit more tracking at the beginning because I wanted to make sure I got the exact title right. I think this might actually be a 3D game. From the looks of it, not even looking into it. I think it's probably going to be a free. Yeah, it is. Alright, let's... I think we have no choice but to just walk forward. So let's uh just run <laughs> for a little bit. See what we come across. Alright, so, if memory serves me correct, this might be a similar part of a couple of other stuff. Or, I, I got more specifically, if I'm correct, then this is probably similar to another game you might have also seen on my channel in Super Mario Odyssey, in that it seems like this game might be open world just like that game. If so, I'll be interested to see it. Also, oh my goodness, this is a lot bigger than I was anticipated. I'm just naturally walking forward, and uh, this is quite a bit different. Before I even go into other stuff, also, we already have our power-up. So this is... This shows off the main mechanic of the aim that many people probably are more familiar with these Kirby games, in which when Kirby actually uh, does stuff, more specifically when we yell specific enemies, he can steal their power-ups and use them for himself. And right off the bat, we get probably the most iconic power-up in the game, the sword power-up, also complete with links. With uh, the link... Uh... I 
I'm not sure if I even have to kill a lot of these enemies, so until I find more about the 100%, I'm probably just gonna focus mostly on surviving and trying to get to the end. The game does still have some supposed 2D mechanics, but it is overall a 3D platformer. There doesn't seem to be any interesting mechanics though so far, so we have to kind of basically go through it first. Until we figure out what actually to do, we might not be exploring much. These guys look bad. Okay, so here's where Kirby just probably discovered the true potential of this game. And Kirby inhaled so much that he also in accidentally and potentially inhaled that car. So now we have become a car. So that's actually the game's main mechanic. And we have a jump as well as a turbo dash. The turbo dash is probably the most prominent feature though. It is probably going to be how we uh, go through the game really fast. Which is where I can see the game getting maybe a good speed on vibe, since we already have a turbo ash. We're also kind of unstoppable when it comes to enemy fashion, as we're completely invincible while using this. So we basically destroy everything. I will say those coins are probably needed. Okay, we okay, we're not fully invincible. If we actually, uh, if our, uh, if we actually hit a wall, our whole dash stops as a whole, so we actually need to reparse it again. So we did take a bit there, but we're fine. We don't, didn't lose our power up yet, though we might lose it. Alright. Well. This is, uh, alright, so this is the actual intro to the game. Okay, this is, this is quite interesting. I can't tell what this is, but if you listen correctly, this, this is probably being said, spoken in Japanese. Actually, now I think of it is probably Japanese. I've seen, watched so much anime now to the point where I can almost immediately recognize if a text is Japanese or not. And I know that because the title is generally a Japanese company, so it's cool. I know. The, uh, it's quite fun. I do like this in extra intel once you do get through the end. Also, this is made by Hell Lavatory, so that means it technically has the same original developer from before. Hell Lavatory was originally responsible for the Kirby games. At least some of the later ones. <laughs> at least they are the main games that they look. Okay, so now we figure out that our once no enemy, yes, the Waddle Dees you see there, those were once our enemies in the game. But we could apparently drop our ability as well, though I don't see why we would do it yet. Let's just continue going. Of course, we're not supposed to be here at all. Harry lives in a separate area called Dreamland, but... Uh, we quickly assumed that things have changed a bit. Funnily enough, the Wadis were supposed to be our enemies for the longest time, but now they're actually our friends in this game, and these new interesting creatures have taken over as our bad guys instead, including what appears to be these kind of little tiny foxes. Oh, and these scrolls, of course. I think we'll learn more about these characters later. Either way, they're trapped in cages, so that means we probably have to save them. And this is probably our main progression. Of 
Okay, so this is how we actually do combat, most likely. And then he's, so he is where we kind of get trapped in, we have to defeat all the enemies. Because I kept the sword from earlier, we can very quickly take them out, though. That's why I think it's almost no reason to use the sword. I still don't know why I mess you, but I think we're about to find out. Hugh, you saved me, thank you. But what about those other guys, the Waddledees? They were all captured and taken away. We fought those beasts as hard as we could, but they kept coming back for more. Now I'm the only one left. I have to go save them. I have to. What? Y'all help me save everyone? That's great. So, your name is Curry? I'm Elfin. Nice to meet you. So, this is. So, we have a butterfly called Elfin, apparently. Help me us out. Hey, Curry! Oh, it's another one of the wildies. So, let's play two co op for the puzzle. I need to have player two control bandana wadadi. Oh, hello. In the. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That it just. I did one thing and it just completely zoomed out for some reason. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's so weird. Okay, well, my actual regular thing is fine, but my other setup is a bit bad. So I'm actually going to be right back for a minute. Okay, has it stabilized? I'm not sure what that happened, but this wasn't even a glitch or any other stuff. I need to actually go to the home menu to make sure this is working. But yeah, um, <clears throat> my capture card kind of had some issues there, in case you're wondering what that was. And so the screen kept on vanishing and de-vanishing, so I had to wait for a little bit. Move the cords around just a tiny bit to make sure they were in place and... They fixed it. All right, finally we get to go in. Boy, I'm glad to see you. I got pulled through that vortex over planet pop star too. Okay, that's where we lived apparently. If you ever want a second player to join you, just let me know. I'll always be ready. But we have to go to the world map. That's the important part. So we have to save our friends apparently. Natural Plains, uh, okay. Downtown Grassland, okay. This is where we have to go. Oh, we have to- oh, oh, we have to get- complete multiple other objectives to get cages, too. Alright, so this is how we, uh, get our- so this is how we actually, uh, have to do 100%. Oh. Okay, and just like that, we discovered our first major objective. That tulip thing we just saw there, we have to make five of them bloom somehow. Of course, we have to find them, or they be hidden behind the back level or something else. Whenever I find something like this, I usually end up searching for a little bit to try and find it. Okay, good, we found some help. I don't see any indication of a regular help setup, so unless I'm missing something, dying probably doesn't immediately result in a game over. It probably just sends us back to checkpoints, but you'll probably find out more about that on accident. This save will probably have its own fair share of difficulties. Of course, now that I've played so many 3D platforms, Mario 3D World and a couple of others included, I'm very ex much experienced of uh, what exactly to do. I don't know exactly what the best route is, so until I can figure out a different power-up, I'm probably just gonna use the sword for the most part, because the sword is actually... 
one of the best uh, starting power-ups. Okay, we can actually uh, get this as well. All right. Okay, so now we get this kind of like shotgun power. Which if we actually were to hit the enemies, we could take them out in one hit. Oh, and this is how we're actually supposed to destroy this spot, too. Oh, we got an extra cage by breaking that building's shelter. But we can't climb up, so we're gonna have to do this. to get up here, where we'll find yet another mysterious hidden collectible that we probably don't know about. That guy looks bad, and I also don't want to defeat him without the power-up, so we're gonna try and get our uh, power-up up top, except we can't, because the game is being cheap. I figured they would have plots like that. So those little interactions uh, are how they effectively force you to do other stuff. Alright. I don't know how many uh, power-ups we have left, but we are already at the end of the level, and we probably haven't gotten all of the tulips. Actually, wait, no. It's not necessarily the end of the level immediately. Let's actually see. There's probably more. All right, let's, uh... It, this is probably just the first section, if I were to ask. Yeah, all right, there's another one. This was only the beginning. We have way more to do still. Of course, another big thing that you might have also noticed is Kirby can basically vote almost infinitely, so most jumps are not a problem. It's doing other stuff other than that that is a problem. And now that cannon is completely nullified. Oh, and I'm guessing those things can be inhaled as well. Given the game's nature, there's probably lots of things that could be hit out. Alright. Well, so now we gain a ground pound like a fet. See how it works against enemies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spiked to that guy right into the ground. Just like that. Okay, this one has a little bit more jump power, so we can carry it to more interesting effects, as well as it to break uh, spots like that open as well. So you have that. I don't know how many coins we need, so we're probably gonna just gather a lot. Guessing that that's an area we're not supposed to access yet, but I could be wrong. Well, where do you go? How about I just land on top of your head? They always seem to have a hidden way to just completely skip having to wait on the cannons. I think in some of the older games in the series, those were a bit more difficult to deal with, but here they're not really a problem. Now there is technically another Kirby game that was released to this point, but... Uh... Oh, perfect. Oh, we got the item, but we didn't actually, uh, land on the actual item itself. That's a problem. 
If we reveal an item but don't actually land on it, we have to do the thing again to make sure we actually land on the item. Which we did now. That is probably also 100% mechanic, so we're gonna have to be careful. Alright, let's keep going. Okay, I don't think we could go any higher than what we see on there. Okay, we have our first actual water deed cage, which means something is about to happen, probably. And we can change. So we have the cutter ability, or the bombing ability. This has good range, but it doesn't have fast speed. This is more of a boomerang style effect. I'm just gonna choose this. This has better range, so it'll be easier for me to defeat uh, whoever comes up. And we have Wild Edge. And he has a sword. Nope. And we can check our ability. I always forget about that. Now, battles in Kirby do tend to be a bit longer since the enemy is, uh, actually do some decent damage overall and have some interesting attacks. That's one thing that you haven't shied away from. Lawn battles where you have to work hard to reduce the enemy's health. Oh, and we could probably steal his ability if we could actually drop it. Okay, there we go. In the end, it's just Minoris, uh... Alright. Oh, still more at the level. Oh yeah, I knew I could uh, lose it. Some attacks are pretty weak for the most part. And I, I don't really do much damage to you, but if you take a big hit, you'll sometimes lose your power-up, and that could be bad if you lose it at a pretty opportunist time, or a not good time in the original games. It would often be death. Okay, so that first one was just a normal wall D. Seems we have to still find the rest of them. Oh, that was just a little secret. Every time that appears, I almost feel like I can inhale it, but I should have known better than to trust that. Okay, that thing looks bad. I think I'm just gonna go around here first. We can... But we just, uh, yeah, go ahead and skip those guys. Okay, now that we have this power-up over here, I think I see a better reason to actually uh, go down there. Because previously I was worried about this guy, but now we ha can just do this to take him out. And there we go. He's dead. And we need to take him out anyways, because he apparently, have, according to what I saw, has eaten a wallaby altogether. It's just kind of strange considering they're in cages, how could you eat that? I don't know. Alright. I don't know exactly how each level is gonna go, so for now I'll just try to get all the stuff. If I miss something, I'll probably have to do it elsewhere. We can always check here, I guess. And if we, uh... Alright, well now there's nothing left to do except maybe farm some small coins and otherwise clear the stage. Well, speaking of which, we have our big boss. Ok, 
Okay, this one is a bit more difficult than previous encounters were. Okay, so this guy cannot be gotten on top of by just regular game stuff. Okay, now we can get on top of them. So this is the all all on this was just a puzzle. Get on top of them. And now we have a big cage with three of all of these. Alright. Alright, now we cleared it. Oh, we get bonus points for clearing a wild mode, which is the Abe's more difficult mode. Oh, uh, and we- These are apparently collectibles. Interesting. So that's what this is. Now that's probably required for 100% as well. Don't want to bother reading that, because, uh, I could always read it later. There's probably a menu for that. Right now, I'm just interested in clearing levels. Okay, well, we saved all the wildies, so I guess that's the main part of this game. So see if you can collect a full set. Alright. Here the tunnel is next. I do like that this uh, they kind of changed this up a bit. Pretty much every other Kirby game has been nothing but uh, just 2D platforming. That's what it's usually known for. Because of the new 3D platforming element, that makes it a little bit more interesting. Alright. Whenever they uh, give it a new ability out for free, it seems there's a new ability required. If I could actually get it. Oh yeah, this is way faster than my previous ability was. The sword is still pretty iconic, but after finding out that this ability is slightly stronger, yeah, it's way stronger. And sure enough, it was required anyways. Oh, we can dash as well. Okay, so that gives us slightly better uh, vertical movement overall. The coins will also probably be useful for something. They'll, I'll have to find out. Grab this jerk so I can move on my way. Meanwhile, though, I'm just kind of going through here. Right. Well, there's quite a few pits this time around. You can definitely float, so I could just do that. I, uh, it's, uh, it's just, I'm a bit worried to just do regular jumps over them. Oh. Okay, so these are like chests. There's more of Waddle-Dees this time around. Four this time instead of three. I don't know why, but... The way they set up this game seems a bit familiar to another game I'm too familiar with. If you're going down the Nintendo line, then it might end up being very similar to a game that a lot of people might have known about called Super Princess Peach. In this game, you have to save one of these. In Super Princess Peach, you had to save Toads, and you had to save them all to beat the game anyways. If this game is any like that, then it's probably going to be very difficult to effectively speedrun. 
Which, I guess is okay for me anyways, since I'm gonna be probably getting most of them anyway. As for when I miss one, I'll probably have to go back later to get it. I nearly, uh, lost that power-up, but thankfully since the enemy that took it out is also nearby, I was able to immediately get it back. Problem is I took a bit of damage before I was able to figure out how to effectively dodge him. Oops. Alright, we need to do something to get rid of that. Okay, there we go. First capsule, this level. So wait, see it. Hello. So many enemies all of a sudden. Goodness, I'm taking a lot more than I was in the first level. These main enemies are a bit rude. Thankfully, since there's multiple of them, I can just keep repeatedly getting it back, but it's very annoying every time I lose it. Alright. Hey, meant to jump there. Okay, we need. There's a narrow wall D nearby. Alright. Thankfully, they have an easy to. Uh, there's an easy to tell uh, sound that plays when you're close to one, so it seems finding the hidden ones won't be a problem. It's doing the challenges that will be. See, this guy has a lot of range on his attack, so it might be better to just either fly over him or completely ignore him altogether. Since if we fly up, we could just completely ignore him altogether. Except we also have to use, so uh, we ended up having to tackle him anyway. Alright, made it in time. Okay, nice. seem to be useful as a platform, despite being quite unique. Oh wow, now they're the stairs. to climb up but I'm not to the same fan as they usually do it. Okay, now that, that there's no reason to do that. Hmm. Uh, we're continuing on now. Not sure how that works, but we'll take it. Oh, 
Alright. Oh, they brought it over here. That's just nice. Can use it later if we need to. Which we'll probably need to. Oh, it's one of those infinite power-up things again. So you can just get it back immediately if you lost it. Seems like the most obvious uh, to end. Unless it stops it. Yeah, it does. So far, been pretty easy. They might get more difficult tight later on. Alright. And we got a checkpoint as well. I have, that's it. So, Wish you a while, D seems to give us a checkpoint. Because that was a convenient way to get to the next spot. I know, in a way, this was required. It does seem to reset, by the way, infinitely, so it's not quite as bad as I thought. Hmm. Well, that apparently was it. No bus whatsoever. We only missed one question. And now it shows you what it is. There's a wanted poster somewhere that uh, we're supposed to remove. Not now we know that, we can always go back for it later, but... I don't like wasting time in the early game. I'd much rather try to beat the game first this time. That's a new thing I'm doing. If I find out I need more, I could just go back later. Hi. Treasure old. There could be rare items in there. Hop in, uh, sir. Sure. Oh, we're forced in with a specific item. Throw and catch. Treasure collecting. stone found. Hooray! 
Okay. Oh, there's toilet types as well. Bomb treasure. Playable in 30 minutes. 30 seconds, whatever. Bowling or switches. Okay. I just avoided that guy altogether. Nice. Skip to that one, at least. Okay, I can see where the game gets a good speedrun vibe from. These challenge levels in particular. Ah, oh, I just missed this. Since it was so close, we could just potentially re-enter the level and lose almost no time. To be fair, it's probably a good way to practice the seed run. So this way we'll actually see what the killing it in the target time actually does. Whether or not it gives us something different. I like the fact that I could just skip take it out that out of the ulti editor. Oh, okay, that was bad. I just missed that one thing altogether. Slow me down a little bit. Doesn't seem to matter. I got to the end at the right time anyway. I'll just give money. Oh, what's the point? There's no... I ain't. If I can farm money elsewhere, it's not going to be really needed. But at least now we know what that does. So we don't necessarily need to get the tire time. So let's just go on to the next stage. If we have enough... this is fast enough, we could maybe... Get closer to the next video. We could probably need this ability as well. Okay, it was a bit trickier to get. Oh, it's even more quicker than the previous ability was. Shading that. I must be missing something. Oh, oh, that's a, a, a yet another new ability. And that needle is just the beginning of it. Okay, so now we have a Popka of some sorts. Uh, so this is what we actually wanted. A big thing that you have to learn quite a bit in the Curry games is which specific ones do what. And okay, that's how the charge shot works. So that's how we're supposed to get that particular coin. Good to know. Okay, 
I do like this power up quite a bit. This is a big thing of the Kirby games, is all the various power ups you can actually use. This allows you to do some really interesting stuff. This charge shot in particular allowing us to just kind of shoot things from far away. Alright. What's this area? This doesn't look the same. There's our payoff that we can get back if we need to get it back. Alright. Never waddle D. Nice. So the hidden ball of D's are easy enough to save once you get the hang of finding the secret zones. It's everything else that could be difficult, like some of the side missions in particular. I just realized I think the power up they call the power up ranger, which actually makes sense. It almost just look like we're a far slager of some sort. More specifically, Curry is right now. Uh oh. Whenever the camera zoots out like this, something bad's got to happen. Yeah, here's our boulder chase sequence in a curvy game of all things. And I gotta mention, big Indiana Jones reference here, although we've probably seen it appear in multiple zones now. I don't know why, they just had to put that in. <laughs> I don't know. I guess they just had to cementify how much the original Indiana Jones movie meant for a lot. And I will say, I think it's a fantastic movie. I watched it. I watched it once. Uh, I, I really love it. It's a uh, movie. But anyway, uh, on to the next thing after that builder statement's there. Uh, looks like we're gonna get the car back. This is my favorite vehicle so far, since it's also by far the fastest. Since you can kind of just dash and go without really much of a worry. The biggest thing, I guess, is if you run into an obstacle, you stop. So, it's the, it does require a little bit of getting used to, but... Oh. Oh, I didn't even go over that. So weird. Oh wait, oh, oh, I, I see what I forgot. We could jump and up while we're turboing. If I had just done that before, I would have been perfectly fine, but I didn't do that. So I forgot about that altogether. Alright. Unfortunately, some of the hidden uh, stuff aren't always knowledgeable at first. You have to clear the level first before the game will tell you what exactly to do. Drive without falling off the edge. Okay, that's simple enough. So it's almost like, it, what, it expected you to almost fall off a couple of times? There must be a way to get that. Oh wait, I could just probably shoot it, right? Okay, I can't dash into it, but I could probably just shoot it with my power up. Yeah, this is actually kind of an annoying in in secret. If I could actually get on top of here, I could maybe figure out what this exactly is. Oh. Oh, I was aiming at Ron altogether. Okay, I thought, I feel like I hit what was supposedly supposed to be the spot. But there's still nothing, okay. I had to go a little bit higher, and in the end, it was just for 
Oh, what a waste of my time. Let's just do this. Let's give the remaining ones and continue on. Finding a whole lot of new power-ups. Again, only missed one. Find the side world while going uphill. <laughs> That's kind of an odd one. challenge, I'm not gonna lie. Of course, you don't know what the challenge is which until you uh, go later into the aim. Alright. One more of those rare star challenges. Alright. Race to the cannon. Alright. Wait a minute, if you time these in properly, do the spikes uh, destroy that? Well, I guess we're not gonna find out. Alright, well, that was simple enough. Sorry, it was surprisingly easy that time, once you got the hang of it. Yeah, so Wild Mode is clearly the definitive version to play. It'd be silly to play newer mode, especially when I have experience with platformers already. Okay, this one's a bit more difficult. It's two starred instead of one starred. And from the looks of it, we're gonna have to hit uh, targets. Too late. What is with all this? Ah, oh, okay. Okay, there we go. We got it. Well, at least the target time seems pretty reasonable for most of these. The big thing we have to do is actually clear the mission to get the rare stone. Alright. It's convenient that those popped up at the end of the level. And that leads us into a new session after that. Well, now that we're done with this one almost. Oh. What is this? Wait. Oh, there's another one! Okay... Oh, there's quite a few hidden ones, actually. Well, we'll figure out what that is later, says we still have some other stuff to do. In the meanwhile, though, this is gonna- that's- this is about it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed- if you like it, you enjoyed, cut, right, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we continue trying to get close to being the aim, but also playing through Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Hope to see you next time. Bye.